second, and from a long way back, maybe Dico the legend who got off the first. First, number four, it did. Hi, my name's David Mouse Cooper, and I used to work in horse racing, and now I'm a professional artist. There is a crossover between painting and, and, and working with horses. You need to be a bit of an artist. If you look at a horse, and you, you might have heard trainers speak this way, they say there's a bloom, there's a shine to his coat, he looks well, he's moving well. You need a great depth of knowledge in anatomy, how the limbs move, the muscles that move the limbs. You need to, to see the bloom in the coat, the colours. There are certain paints that will make a, a horse shine or something in a picture. There's a depth of colour. Uh, out of all the animals I've had anything to do with in my life, I think horses are a window into our souls. There's, there's the mystique, there's the unknown, there's the, I don't know why it's good, but it is good. And you see that in artists. There's a flair. I can relate to them. I see them, I've always seen them as individuals, as characters. As humans, maybe. There's people you can see a lot in horses that I see in people. I was born in Deptford in uh, South East London. Yeah, nice, nice place for when I as a child. I liked it. I used to see lots of horses, um, cart horses basically. So I would I would roam, go down to the viaducts and the, 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 you know, the railway underpasses where they were all stabled and that's where I used to see my first horses and then I used to draw them and sketch them and stroke them and sit on them and that's where it all started. I ended up going to a riding school bus and a train ride away. I drew a lot of horses on the walls and uh, in my dad's books. I was encouraged at school and uh, really it just grew from there. It's always something I wanted to do. Uh, I find it a very natural thing to do. I had to do my A-level in part in school, but in Goldsmiths College as well. So that's where I started to the professional part into me. The, the careers and the school knew that I was going to leave when I was 15 to go into his apprentice in horse racing. I'd already planned to, to, yeah, to do that as my career. The chance to go to Goldsmiths College was was there, but it would have included a scholarship that would have made me stand in London and it would have meant you know, giving up a career in racing. I chose racing, I always knew I could get back to the art. I don't regret it, I think it was the right decision. It's how you do it in life, it's, and it, it taught me something later on in life that you have to seize the opportunity rather than, um, you know, if you wait too many times, I'm afraid the, the, the buses don't come along. I went to uh, Newmarket first. I went to work for a man called Bill Marshall. And then from there I went to Harry Thompson Jones where I'd taken on my, my apprenticeship. Those were the days when you got four pounds pocket money a week and you lived above the stable. It was very old fashioned really, compared to what it is today. My passion with the horses and being an apprentice at that time was, was you know, I was at the forefront of my mind. I still kept sketching and drawing. Not as much as I should, maybe. Three years of apprenticeship on the flat 
my weight started to, to go up and uh, I went to a jumping stables. I travelled to David Ellsworth's, which was a mixed yard. Living down in, in uh, Whitsbury, I really loved that was That was heaven. Great times, great bunch of horses. Still consider him to be the best trainer I ever worked for. Um, he just sprinkled magic on horses. He made horses do things that, that I've never seen other trainers do. Then I decided to just up sticks one day and travel around Europe. You could buy a ticket for £10 and you could travel on all the trains. It was like a pass. And I thought, well, this is great. I've got to do it. What a chance are we going to get to do this again? And across to France and up to Belgium and up to Holland. Stayed in youth hostels, visited museums, the landscapes. I think that was one of the best things I ever did. I loved it. And that enabled me to see things, to see art, to see how other people work, paints that worked in the streets, to pick up ideas, techniques. Uh, I met a girl in Paris in a, in a hotel corridor and she was exercising first thing in the morning. She was a ballerina and she was doing her stretches and exercises. <laughs> Something to see first thing in the morning. Worked all day and night. A roller skater up until midnight in the Moulin Rouge. She was studying all day, and you know, obviously to be a ballet dancer. And she worked solidly. She was scarred, you know, her knuckles on her toes were all broken, bruises up her legs. I realised that I'd been coasting along. I hadn't really been working hard. I thought I was, but I was. You know, I wasn't, and um, that sent that she 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 did inspire me to 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 go back to putting in some time and effort into um, getting to where I want to be. So I was back in Newmarket, and I was always bearing in mind that I was going to do something about it, uh, and it was just how, when, and you know why. Fractured from vertebrae in my neck which left me in a bit of a state for a few months. Um, a fallout with the um, Mrs. Mouse, um, we, we weren't really getting on. Again, bad times, not, not the greatest of times, but I turned it around and thought, this is the opportunity I need now to, to, to really do something else. And that's when I uh, planned to sell my house get some money together and go to college, get my art degree. Not just for me, but it's what people ex almost expected me to go and do. It, it, um, it rubber sealed and rubber stamped the thing that I could paint, I could draw, but I just needed that little bit of re-education in my life. I had depression at that time. What, well, how, how strong it was, how mild it was, or, or, or whatever. It was, it was a feeling of, of self-worth, self-esteem, you know, um, that the, the, the career as it was, was, I could have just been a, a person working in racing. Um, I thought I, I offered more, and to offer more, I, I needed to re-educate myself and I needed to put myself in a stronger position. Nobody actually comes up and tells you that. And no, no visits to the doctors or the psychiatrists tell you that. It was something I worked out for myself. When I went to college, I couldn't write. I couldn't, I, I couldn't, do some of the things that the kids around me do, were doing. So I had to relearn the skills. I had to learn to read, you know, and study and visit the library. And there was nothing available at that time. And racing didn't, um, I, wasn't, I don't think, was 
acutely aware of the, that cycle for a lot of lads in their thirties and forties, where you know they were getting lost. We needed a little bit more help and education in that area because racing doesn't offer you that opportunity to do that thing. You have to go somewhere else, and um, my eyes were opened up a lot by 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 that journey. But it helped me out of my depression. It started to see, make me see that my worth was, was still there. I mean, I've spoke to many people since then who wouldn't go into education in their forties because of the fear, because of the unknown. But there's nothing to be frightened of. There's nothing really that you can't face and can't cope with. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. If you're struggling, get some help. The education venues that I've seen have always been helpful. Ask a friend, get them to read your dissertation. Be a little bit more aware of your surroundings and what, what's available. Learn how to use a computer, the websites, the, the, the information that's out there, it's all there. It's up to you to look for it and find it got my degree uh, with honours and um, what was the next step? So the next step really was com again combining the horse racing and um, the art. But first I undersold myself. I didn't charge anywhere near enough. I thought that my art was uh, perhaps not worth that much. A chap I know called Rob Pillsworth uh, stopped me in the high street and he was, a, he was an old vet friend that I'd known for many years and he basically gave me a, a rollicking and said, look, you're not charging enough. You really, you don't realise how good you are. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get hold of you and we're going to sort this out. And uh, that's, that's when things started to really take shape because Rob gave me that belief that, that they are worth more money and I, I need to do this seriously to make to make a career of it. And um, that's when it took off. So Rod kind of manages the sales, runs a website for me, um, deals with commissions and deals, deals with on a basis with that and it's proved very successful. So again, the, the breadth of people that you know in life, the opportunities, the meeting in the high street with Rob, they're fortuitous, but they wouldn't come about unless I'd had the, the career I'd had, but they wouldn't have come about if I hadn't taken the opportunity. Am I a more confident person? Yes. Am I, um, am I enjoying life? More, yes, and that's probably the, the the one thing that you take from it. You know, if you if you're happy in your life and you you're doing what you want to do, how good is that? It, it's it's pretty good. So, I think that's the things that I'm glad now that I've achieved.